Hello and welcome to my channel Crochet and Copy. My name is Judy. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this lovely luggage ID. Let's get started. So these are just different options you could do with the luggage ID. I design it as the luggage ID because this is a great way to find your luggage when it's going around on that baggage carousel. All the luggage look alike but of course you could adapt it to whatever you wanted to use it for go ahead and use different colors and if you want the fine to be longer when you attach it to your luggage just add more chain and that's all so these are different options you could try and as you see they came out pretty nice we did great work when we finished let me show you how easy it is to attach the luggage id to your luggage take your time with it and adjust it to how tight or how loose you want it to be but that's it. That's how simple and easy it is to attach it to your luggage. Before we get started, I wanted to show you as best as I can a measurement for our luggage ID. So with the leaf and the rose, I'll say it's 15 inches. Okay, so that's with the rose and the leaf, 15 inches. And the rose measurement I'm using the back of it, it's like three and a half inches for the rose. So these are supplies we're going to be using to make our lovely luggage ID. I'll go over them with you. The yarn that we're using is the impeccable loops and thread. It's 285 yards. We're not going to use all of that, of course. It's the medium four and the color is eggplant and is 100% acrylic and everything is the same for the next yarn the only thing is the different is the color and this is the petunia okay and of course we're not going to use all of that either the hook that we're using is the USG6 it's the 4.00 millimeter we're going to use a stitch marker we're going to be using a yarn needle and scissors so these are supplies let's get started so we're going to start off with a nice long tail and we want the tail to be nice and long because we're going to use it later okay so give it about 17 to 18 inches before you start and of course the color yarn we're starting with is the eggplant so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a slip knot stitch and that's to get us started so this is how I'm comfortable in doing my slip knot stitch. I take my yarn, drape it over my two fingers, take my hook, put it between my two fingers and pull up a loop of yarn. And there we have a knot. So just tighten that knot against your hook. And there you go. That's it. So now we're going to do 52 chain. And a chain is yarn over your hook and pull through, yarn over your hook and pull through yarn over your hook and pull through, yarn over your hook and pull through, yarn over your hook and pull through. Okay, so you're going to do that for 52 times. And when you finish doing that for 52 times, I'll show you what to do next. Okay, so we did that for 52 times and this is how we look. So we did 52 chain. So now what we're going to do is we're going to and the fourth chain from our hook so this would be one two three four the fourth chain from a hook we're going to put one double crochet we're just going to turn it and we're going to use those little bars in the back okay and that's where we're going to put it so remember it's the fourth one from your hook so it will be one two three four right here we put the first double crochet and to do a double crochet what we do is we yarn over before we go into that chain and we're going to use remember you're using the back the little bars in the back of our chain and you're going to pull up a loop of yarn you have your three loops of yarn on your hook yarn over and then you're going to pull across the first two loops of yarn right here these first two and then you have two more loops of yarn remaining yarn over and you're going to pull across those two and that's it that's how you do a double crochet so with that double crochet we made 
this will be our first V shape. You see as we go along what I mean by that, okay? So that counts as our first V shape. So now this is the pattern that we're going to follow. So you're going to chain one. You know how to do chain because that's what we did for 52 times. And now you're going to skip the next two chain. One, two right here. You skip those. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a double crochet in the following one. So right here. So remember yarn over your hook. Go into that chain, pull up a loop of yarn, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull across the first two, two more loops remain in your hook, yarn over, and you're going to pull across those final two. And that's it, how you do that double crochet again. So now what you're going to do is you're going to chain two, one, two, and then we're going to do another double crochet right into that same chain we just did. That chain space right there. So go back into that chain and put another double crochet. Okay. So you see how I say with the V shape, how we're making it out. So now this is the pattern we're going to follow till we get all the way to the end of our chain. All right. Or the row that we have. So you're going to chain one. And then you're going to skip two chains down here and then you're going to double one double crochet into the next so that would be the third chain remember three loops on your hook yarn over pull across the first two yarn over to complete it pull across the last two chain two one two and then in that same chain space you're going to put another double crochet okay see here goes your V I'll show you one more time so chain your one and you're going to double crochet in the third chain right there pull up a loop yarn over pull across the first two Yarn over, complete it, pull across the last two. Then chain two, one, two. Now again, another double crochet right in there. And that's it. Okay. So keep on working with that pattern of next stitch will be a chain one, skip the next two chain here and you put one double crochet chain two and another double crochet into that same chain space when you finish with that i'll meet you there so we completed row one and that's how we look so far and then when you count them you have you're supposed to have 17 v shape including the one we started off with now to start round two we're going to chain three one two three and we're going to turn our work so now this will be the pattern that we're going to follow when we start row two so what you're going to do is you're going to put nine double crochet into that this first v shape that we have okay and you know how to do the double crochet because we've been doing it so now you're going to put nine double crochet right there so that's one, two. Okay, so we did that. We did that for nine times by putting double crochet. And that's how we look. So now when we were working, remember for us to make the V shape, we did those two chain and that's what gave us that V shape. And before we got there, we had did one chain. So that little gap right there, we're just going to put one single crochet and a single crochet is just go to that space pull up a loop you have two loops of yarn in your hook yarn over and just pull across two of them at the same time and that's it that's how you do a single crochet so now for the next V shape that will be the chain two space from row one you're going to put another nine double crochet there 
and you can go ahead and count it so you make sure you have your nine because remember we did that one single crochet so this will be it so the next stitch over will be the first double crochet so one two three four five six seven eight nine and now again remember the pattern is that chain one space we're just going to put one single crochet we go to that chain one space pull up a loop of yarn yarn over and pull across those two loops of yarn and that's your single crochet so now the pattern call that we were going to do for the first six v shape we're going to put nine double crochet so we did two already so you need three four five six so go ahead and do four more and then you would get your six and i'll meet you there okay so we did that pattern and this is how we look by doing it for six times so and of course we finish off with the single crochet in that chain one space from the previous row so now what you're going to do is in nine the v shape so that's the chain two space for nine of them you're going to put seven double crochet so it's going to be seven double crochet chain one seven double crochet chain one seven double crochet chain one nine times and when you finish that i'll meet you there this is how we look when we did those additional nine v shape with the seven double crochet this is how it looks okay so and then of course we finish off with that single crochet so now we have this v shape and the first one we started with here we have two of them left so what you're going to do now is you're going to put five double crochet and then you're going to put a single crochet and then five double crochet i'm not going to show you how to do that because you know how to do it <laughs> okay so go ahead and do those and when you finish that five i'll meet you there okay so we did that for two times with the five double crochet on our last two v so now all you're going to do is just chain because we're going to fasten off so chain one and then just pull up a little tail and cut it off and that's it and i'll show you the next step so i cut off my yarn as you see so now what we're going to do is we're going to roll up the flower to form it out like how we have it here okay so that's what i'm going to show you next how to roll it up so what we're going to start we're going to start with the petals that are the smallest so that's where we fasten off and then we're going to work our way up to the larger petal so we're just going to start rolling and of course i'm rolling it on the right side where we finish off row two because this would be considered a back of our work when we finish off row two so just start rolling it and i like to hide the little tail just right here so it stays out of my way when i'm rolling And I check the back now and again to make sure it's okay. And we're just going to roll it to get to the bigger petals of our rows. Or if you prefer flower. And if you don't like how it looks when you first do it remember it's not attached yet so you could play with it you know unravel it and then do it as nice or tight as you like it and how open the petals will be so it's up to you to decide at that point but i like it this way and i finish rolling it up so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to grab my yarn needle and attach it and then show you how i just make sure the petals they stay together sew them up together so I attach my yarn needle to my yarn and of course that's the yarn that we left when we first started to crochet the flower okay so you know that so what I like to do because we have right here the last petal that we are rolling I just go to the end of it and then go through as much of as much petals as I can without 
not coming up to the front of our flower okay and then just grab stitches as we go and that's all I'm gonna do with it just make sure it holds okay Okay, so I only have a little bit left, so I'm just gonna tuck it in here and cut it off, and that's it. And then I'll show you. We're gonna do now for the back. We're gonna do an additional little piece. I'll show you how to do that. Now we're still with our eggplant yarn. We're gonna do the back of the flower, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna start off with an adjustable ring. So the adjustable ring, similar to how I start my slip knot stitch, you see. So I take the yarn, drape it over my two fingers, I let it fall to the back, put the hook between my two fingers, and I pull up a loop of yarn. Now, we're not going to attach that knot against our hook, but what we're going to do is we're going to chain one. And this is to hold our adjustable ring in place, because you want to have your tail and your yarn attached. So we're going to put six single crochet into our adjustable ring and for the first one we're going to put our stitch marker so we're going to need our stitch marker now okay and you know how to do the single crochet i showed you just go into our adjustable ring pull up a loop of yarn and pull across and that's it so put your stitch marker in and this is to help us remind us okay when we start because now we're going to work in rounds, okay? You could adjust a little tail a little bit, but don't pull it all the way through so you can work with it. So that's one. So we need single, six single crochet, okay? So that's one, two, and six, okay? So you make sure you count them because we have the first one where we have our stitch marker in. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now what you're going to do is with that little tail we have, we're just going to pull on it and we close up our adjustable ring. And that's it. That's for round one. So with the completion of round one, you have six stitches. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take out our stitch marker and we're going to do for each stitch from round one, we're going to put two single crochet. So go into that first single crochet, and that's one. I'm going to put my stitch marker back in so I can find my spot. And then back into that same single crochet, you put another single crochet. So that's the pattern. So all you're going to do in each stitch from round one, just put two single crochet and then you will have 12 at the finish of round two so go ahead and do that i won't show you and when you finish i'll meet you there so make sure you have your 12 before you move on so for round that's for round two so round three take out our stitch marker i'm going to put one single crochet right there put your stitch marker back in and then for the next stitch right there we're going to put two double crochet so this is the pattern for round three so you're going to put one single crochet next stitch two single crochet in that same stitch okay so make sure you do that for round three so the next stitch right here will be one single crochet next one right here two single crochet Continue doing that, and when you're finished, I'll um, meet you there. So make sure before you move on that for completion of round three, you have your 18 stitches. So now for round four, take out the stitch marker, and we're going to put one single crochet right there. Put your stitch marker back in, and the next stitch will be one single crochet, and this is the pattern around. And the next stitch you're going to put two single crochet so that's the pattern for round 
four because we're increasing as we go along as you see so the next stitch will be right here that will be one single crochet one single crochet and the following you put two single crochet so keep on working with that and when you finish that you should have 24 stitches at the end of round four so now we're doing round five and this will be our last round and of course as you were seeing so you know you were doing it right that our last stitch was our increase stitch where we finish off so every time before you start the new round you are increasing that stitch so now for round five this is the pattern we're going to do one single crochet put your stitch marker back in and it will be for the first three stitches we're just going to put one single crochet and then the following you're going to put two single crochet so that's it so make sure you keep that pattern going till you get back to the stitch marker i made you there so it's the first three you put one single crochet and then the following you put two single crochet okay so we have completed round five and with round five completed when we increase you're supposed to have 30 stitches at the end of round five so now what we're going to do is we're just going to pull up a nice tail i'm going to give it give it about 17 to 20 inches because we're going to use it to sew on later all right but i'll show you how i want it to um when we finish off so it could be like because when you finish crocheting around you have where you see the gap so i'm going to just cut it off and then i'll show you how to grab your yarn needle and i'll show you how to do like an invisible join okay so where you have your stitch marker and of course i cut off my yarn and yarn needle attach we're going to skip that one and we're going to go to the next stitch if we're doing another single crochet go right through it pull on it slightly and now you turn it towards you so you could take out your stitch marker now and we go back to from where our yarn is coming from and we just use the back portion of that stitch to go through right there you just want to make it look nice so it's like we're doing another single crochet see makes it look like that because we like I said, crocheting around gives it a little gap in the top. So we don't want that to be showing too much. So this is right. And then I'm just going to give it right the first little stitches right there. Just pull it through right there. Because I'm going to use the, this tail later on. So I don't want it to be too far down. But I just want it to be secure. So that's how it looks and then remember this is our tail we started but our finishing tail keep that don't go far to leave it we're going to use that later all right so now we're going to make our leaf and we're going to make two of them so I already went ahead and did one as you see so we switched to the petunia color yarn now so we're going to chain 12 to start off with but of course you know how i do my slip knot stitch so i don't have to show you slowly how to do that but that's it so you start off with a slip knot stitch and we're going to chain 12. one two okay so we did that for 12 times so now we're going to work in the front of our chain because the last time we work in the back the little bars because i'm going to show you because we're going to work on both sides of our chain see as we go along so now what we're going to do is the second chain from our hook so not this one but this one we're going to put one single crochet and you know how to do this single crochet i'm just going to put the stitch marker here so later on when i refer to it you know what it is i'm saying if you need to put stitch markers for the others so you could help you guide you go ahead you see as i go along what i mean all right so that's the first one so for the next chain right here we're going to put a half double 
crochet. I haven't shown you that one, but we did the single before. So the half double con crochet consists of yarn over, and then you go into that next chain, and you're gonna pull up a loop of yarn. You have your three loops on your hook. What you're gonna do is yarn over and pull across all three of them at the same time. So that's a half double crochet. One more time, yarn over, go into that chain, pull up a loop of yarn, three loops of yarn in your hook, yarn over and pull across all three of them to complete it. And that's the half double crochet. So now for the next two chain, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one double crochet. All right, so you know how to do that. And then for the next chain, you're going to do a triple crochet. And the triple is you're going to yarn over once, yarn over again. So you're going to yarn over two times before you go into that chain. Go into that chain. And then you're going to pull up a loop of yarn. And the first two loops of yarn, we're going to take them off two at a time. All right. So yarn over. So Take off that two, yarn over, take off that two, and yarn over, and finally the last two. So that's how you see the triple got its name, the double and the half. It's how many times we take it off our hook, right? All right, so the next chain, what you're going to do is two double. And so you're going to do one double here and one double here. So the following two chain, just put one double crochet. Okay, so I went ahead and did that. So now we're going to do for the next two chain, uh, one half double crochet. So the half again, remember you pull up that loop, so you got the three, yarn over and pull across all three of them at the same time. Yarn over before you go into the next chain, pull up the loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull across three of them. That's it. So now we end off with our last chain right here. We're going to put one single crochet right there. Okay, so now we're going to work on the opposite side of the chain. If it's your first time doing it, it's kind of a little confusing, but you do it a couple of times, you get it, all right? So now, since we're working on the opposite side, the chain has like other another bar over here when we're doing it so that's what we're going to be working in but since we're going to start with that first chain we when we work on the opposite opposite side it's right here it's basically where we just put that other single crochet all right so it's just one single crochet in the opposite side of that chain so that's how it should look all right because everything we just did we're just going to do it in reverse and go back to where we have our stitch marker to remind us. So now for the next opposite side of the chain right here, you're gonna do a half double. And then the next chain, another half double. Hopefully you could see it good because I'm trying to open it up so you can see where we're putting it, where we actually put in our on the opposite side of our chain. As I said, we're working in the front now and we work on the opposite side of the chain. So now for the next two chain, we're gonna put one double crochet. And the next chain is the triple. And remember the triple, you go, you loop over two times and then you go into that chain you pull up a loop of yarn and you're going to take off two at a time. The next two chain, just put one double crochet. And the next two chain, half double crochet. And hopefully you can see it. There's a last chain right here. And we're gonna put just one single crochet right there. All right. 
And see where I tell you I put the stitch marker to remind us where we started our first single crochet on the opposite side of our chain. What you're going to do is you can take it out. If you if not, if you feel comfortable, just leave it there. You could go right underneath because it's the same thing. All right. And just we're going to slip stitch there. So this is to end our leaf to close it up. All right. So you slip stitch is just pull up that loop and you're going to pull straight across. And that's it. Now give it a little tail. We're going to tuck it in and then you cut it off and that's our leaf. So go ahead and make sure you make two of them exactly alike. So what I'm going to do is we're going to join them together now, but this is where we fasten off. So I want to leave that so you can understand what I'm telling you. But here, this part that we started with, I'm going to tuck it in because that's what we're going to use to sew them together. All right. So go ahead and I'll show you one, but I won't show you the next one. How to just tuck it in, weave it in so it's out of our way when we're working with it. Okay, so I attach my yarn needle and it's already kind of secure, but I just want to hide the tail so it doesn't show. So find whatever stitch you want in the back and just weave it in there and then you cut it off and then it will be out of the way. So go ahead and do it for the other one too. I won't show you how to do the other one. It's a little tail we got and it's secure already. All right, so go ahead and cut it off do the other one exactly the same okay so where we just hit the little tail i will consider that the base of our leaf because this would be i say the tip of our leaf the way it looks how i like it so we're going to put them together like this and then we're going to still be using our petunia yarn and we're going to join them together so grab your hook and we're going to use the outer low stitch from that's why i said we tuck it in because it would have been in our way if we were doing it with the tail still there well it bothers me when i do it if you could do it without the tail or the tail there that's fine all right so we're going to pull up a little tail because we're going to have to tuck that in later and then just loop your yarn over your hook and pull it through our leaves there you go so now since our yarn is attached we're going to chain 45 chain and you know how to do that so i won't show you how to do that but keep your little chain loose okay as you work 45 chain okay so we did that for 45 times we did the chain so this is how we look All right so now what we're going to do is the second chain from our hook, not this one, but this one. And then we're going to be working now in the back bar as we were doing the first time we started. So the back bar, go into it and we're just going to do one single crochet right there. And each of the chain in the back, the little bars, till you get back here. Just put one single crochet, all right? And I'll meet you there. So that's it, just one single crochet. I won't show you how to do it because you know how to do the single crochet in the back bar to the end of our little chain. Okay, so we made it back and we're gonna have 43 chain to work back with when we started. Because the first chain that we did, is just basically to hold our yarn and everything in place so we can't put a, another single crochet in that one so just give it a little tug say hold so now what you're going to do you're going to go right back into that same little space that we started with when we attach our yarn and we're just going to slip stitch right there so everything holds in and the slip stitch again is just pull up that loop of yarn and then pull straight across the other yarn that we have on our hook and you're going to pull up a little tail and cut it off and that's it and that's how our yarn and our leaf is attached so we have a little vine going and we have the leaf and then i'll show you how to attach it to our flowers so i have all my pieces together now that we're going to attach them but i just want to move certain tails out of my way before i start 
this little tail you could leave it because it won't show but i to me it's just going to be in my way so i'm just gonna it's already kind of secure so it's just hiding it out of my way and then pick up a couple of stitches and i'm going to cut it off and then start showing you how to sew everything together so now I'm going to place the vine the wrong side on the back of the flower because this will be the front of our vine and when we attach the leaf we attached it on the right side because this is the wrong side of our leaf so that's what I'm going to make sure I have it so when it dangles it's and when you flip it the right side is showing wrong side right side so i'm going to place it right there middle so i have enough tail to hold on and then i'm going to start sewing i want to first make sure like i said make sure it dangles on the wrong side and of course we have our crochet back piece on the right side there's a crochet back this is the wrong side and this is the right side so that first stitch I want to make sure I get the vine so I can hold it so since we're in the back I'm just going to pick up stitches from the flower petal and then go into the vine and then come out and we're going to use the outer edge the last row that we did for the flower back and that's how we're going to attach it And then go to the next stitch over and then go through the vine pick up a couple of stitch from the petals I don't make it show front and then come back to the next crochet piece And just check it as you go along that you like it the way it is before you really secure secure it because then you can't take it off right now you could kind of take it off and work with it so that's all we're going to do we're just going to go around and attach I basically made it back to where I started so I'm just going to go ahead and do some more and make sure it's nice and secure okay I got it to where I feel like it's nice and secure so I'm going to put one back here so I could go from inside and just hide it so I'm going to go in and come out through the middle of where we did the adjustable ring and then that will hide my tail so I'm just gonna grab my scissors and cut that off okay I'm going to show you how to tuck in one tail because we've got a few from the leaf to do but I'm only going to show you one it's the one that we end off with when we slip stitch so I'm just going to go back through the thickness of our leaves pull it because this is the right side of our work so I want to hide it in the back of our work and then the back has nice space between our stitches to hold it in place good that's it we're all finished we did awesome work this is the back of our flower and this is the back of our leaf we did great work till next time thank you for watching take care bye bye